Today we would be beginning with a very interesting topic and that is eye one of the major sense organs now we already know there are five sense organs we have eye ears then we have the sense of smell through the nose we have the touch receptors which is which are present in the skin and then we have uh, the tongue which basically sends the taste now if we talk about eye what it actually does is it converts the light energy into electrical energy and the whole process which is uh, can i can say can be divided into two sections one is the concept of physics where we understand the concept of light the properties of light and the second is the structure of the eye and how it is similar to a pinhole camera so today we would be talking about the structure of eye in detail now let's understand the structure of eye if we understand our eye itself we understand that you have the white layer that is there and this white layer is not present just in the front but it is present in the whole of the eye now this eye could be considered as a ball which is having a outermost layer which is white in color except the center part the cornea which is transparent through which the light actually goes in so the white layer that we can see outside the pupil and the iris that is there we'll understand these terms in a while is the scurla now scurla is a layer which is tough outer coating that is present it is not only present in the front but also on the periphery so on this whole ball on all the sides you would have scurla that would be present except the very front where this scurla would not be white in color but would be transparent so that is the first and the most important concept the next most important concept is out within this white layer that we have we have the circle of the eye that is visible and there there are two further circles concentric rings we could say one inside other the innermost one is the pupil and outside the pupil is the iris now what is the role of the iris iris basically helps in understanding the color of the eye and it controls the size of the pupil we would understand the concept of accommodation in higher standards where we would understand this in more detail in the coming sections now the next important thing is the pupil now what does pupil actually does pupil is a pigment uh, pu pupil basically has a black pigment that is present which absorbs all of the light that is falling in and the size of this pupil is basically governed by what this is governed by iris so that is the frontmost structure that we have talked about now where does the image actually form the image forms on the retina which could be seen in the back of the eye so on this ball that we are talking about right now we were on the front which is the pupil the iris that is visible to us and on the back side of this ball we would have what we would have the retina that is present and on this retina you would have the image that would be formed now again we have another important concept which is the lens now this lens that is present is suspended by the suspendary ligaments and it is supported by the ciliary muscles now this lens between this lens and the outermost cornea that is present you have the aqueous humor that is filled in and between the lens and the back side so beyond the lens the back side of the eye you would have the vitreous humor that is present vitreous humor is a jelly like substance aqueous humor which is present towards the outside region outside the lens between the lens and the cornea we could say is watery pigment so that is a major difference between aqueous humor and vitreous humor that is there now as we have already talked about scurla which is the outermost layer and within this scurla we have uh, the other layers that are present which is the retina and on the retina we have fovea that is present now what is fovea fovea is a point where we have the brightest of the all vision what do we mean by brightest of the all vision let's understand this as one of the page that you are looking in at one time only two of the letters of this page would be visible to you in the clearest form we see the whole of the page
page just because our eyes are scanning through it. But at a time, the most precise and the most clear vision we could say is on just two letters of the whole of the page that you could understand. And that is where you have the image formation on the fovea. Now, fovea is able to accommodate only two degree of the area that is there. So, only two degree of the area is accommodated by fovea. Again, a very, very important concept. The next important thing that we need to understand is cornea is the part of the skull itself, as we said, but it is transparent and behind this cornea we have the pupil and the iris that is present on the lens. Conjectiva is a very very thin layer which is present inside the eyelids and it is a kind of continuous layer with the corneal epithelium and this cornea is indeed important because in most cases where we talk about eye donations what is basically transplanted is the cornea which we would understand in more details now the next important thing, as we said about the lens, which is transparent, it is held by the suspendary uh, ligaments that are there. It is flexible and it can change its shape based on the light that is coming in. So based on the light that is coming in, it's trying to create a focus onto the retina behind. And as a result, it has a capability to change its shape. Again, that is a higher level concept that we understand about the adjustment of the lens that is present. Uh, the next important thing that we understand is the choroids. Now, choroids are the layers which have huge amount of blood cells that are present and these lie between the scurla and the retina. So, between the scurla and the retina, you have the uh, choroids that are present and uh, then Another important concept that we need to understand is the kind of vision. Now, we have the day vision as well as the night vision. Now, this day and night vision is understood by the rods and the cones. Rods have the capability to uh, detect light in low intensity. However, cones have a capability to detect different colors. So, a good way to remember is rods and wrath. So, Night vision is attributed to rods. So R and R is what you can remember here. So rods, you would have good vision at the night. And owl is a good example, which has significant proportion of rods which are present in the eye. The next important concept is tear glands. Now just inside our eye, above the uh, eyelids, we have the tear gland that is present. Now this tear gland, keeps on secreting and this secretion lubricates the eye there are two advantages first it is a solution of sodium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate and this helps to wash away any kind of dust that is there or affecting your eye. The second important concept is it has lysosomes. Now we already know what are lysosomes. Lysosomes have an ability to kill bacteria and therefore these uh, tear or these uh, the tear which is secreted from the tear glands basically helps to wash away any kind of bacteria that are going into the eye or affecting the eye. So that is another important concept that we need to understand. And finally, we have the lacrimal glands towards the inner side of the eye. And this is where you have the draining of the tear fluid that takes place into the nasal cavity. So again, a close relation which is seen between your eyes and your nose when you especially cry. So that is a very important concept of lacrimal gland which drains the tears ultimately into your nasal cavity. So understanding this is very very important. A quick recap of the structure. The outermost layer is the skirla which is the white tough coating. The front part of the skirla is transparent and that is cornea. 
Inside the cornea, if you look, we have two concentric rings in our eyes. The innermost ring is the pupil. Outside the pupil, you have iris. Iris has the capability to change color or it basically not change color. It gives you the color of the eye. So you, you, you can see people with blue eye, people with brown eye or black eye and whatsoever. So that is how we understand the role of the iris. Then you have the blind spot that is seen. Uh, fovea where you have the brightest or the clearest vision we can say blind spot where you do not have the vision that is seen and finally it connects to the optic nerve and that sends the light signal into the electric signal so this is the whole concept that we need to understand about eye so understanding how the image formation takes place in the eye. Now the point of light on the object is forming the point of light on the retina. Now understanding the structure of the eye as we have already done the image formation takes place at the retina. So let's understand I have uh, let's say a candle here and the light rays are falling from this candle and they are transmitted to the eye. Now in this process there are three elements in the eye which basically refract the light. Those are cornea, aqueous humor and vitreous humor and then you have the formation of that image that would take place on the retina. When the image formation takes place on the retina, it's basically a concept of a pinhole camera. You would have the inverted image and smaller size of image that would be formed. A very, very important concept. Now, in the previous section, we have already understood what is the blind spot. Blind spot is the spot just before the optic nerve where you do not have any image that has been formed. So let's take a very interesting example. In front of me, there is a window that is there and on that window, there is a fly that is sitting. Now, if I'm focusing on that fly, what would happen? When I'm focusing on that fly, that image of the fly would form on which part of the eye? So that image would form on the fovea but this fly which is sitting on the window is here and the image is being formed on the fovea but opposite to that fly is let's say point B which is the border of the window and that border of the window is not visible in the eye and that is because that part is falling where it is falling on the blind spot and this is how we understand what part falls on the blind spot is not visible in the eye and the remaining parts get visible into the eye. The next important thing is the image as we said if the fly is here on the window pane the image would be inverted and it would be a little smaller than the actual image that would be formed. Two very very important concepts that we would understand today is Firstly, how the intensity of light behaves and the second is the concept of accommodation. To understand the intensity of life, we need light, we need to understand the pupil. Now pupil, the changes in the pupil which, which are because of the automatic reflex actions that takes place is very very important to understand. What happens when there is all of the sudden bright light? You try to close your eyes and the pupil tries to constrict itself. However, when there is a dim light, the pupil expands. Now, which part is pupil? We have already understood the innermost part. Within the circle, there is another dark circle that is seen and the innermost circle is the pupil. So, we are focusing on that part of the eye right now. So, that pupil basically adjusts itself to the light. Now, within this pupil, there are two types of muscles. One is the radial muscle which moves out from the pupil uh, and the next is the concentric uh, muscles which are or the circular muscles which are basically concentric in shape. Now what would happen when the pupil gets constricted? 
when will the pupil get constricted in the case of bright light and when the pupil gets constricted you would have the radial muscles which would be relaxed and the circular muscles would contract clear opposite would happen in the case of dim light so in the case of dim light you would have pupil that would expand now when the pupil is expanding you would have the circular mus muscles which are in the same fashion as the pupil and therefore they will also expand a very simple trick to remember so circular muscles move with the pupil so when the pupil constrict they constrict when the pupil expands they expand the next is the radial muscle radial muscle in this case would constrict so when the case of dim light the radial muscles would constrict in the case of bright light the radial muscles would relax and that is how the intensity of light is being checked by our eyes that's the first concept the first very important concept the second very important concept is a concept of accommodation or focusing now when we talk about accommodation or focusing what happens it is the difference with the far objects versus the near objects now what would happen when i'm trying to see a far object when i'm trying to see a far off object the lens of the eye would dilate and it would become thin okay so the ciliary muscles are basically relaxed and the outward pressure of the uh, humor humor on the scala basically pulls the ligaments and therefore you would have thinner lens that would be seen and this is when you are trying to see a distant object opposite happens when you are trying to see a near object when you are trying to see a near, near object it constricts and when it constricts what would happen the pressure uh, basically brings the ligaments tighter and therefore you would have a thicker lens that would be seen so when you are trying to see near objects thicker lens is seen when you are trying to see distant objects the lens become thin and this is the process of accommodation so the first concept is the intensity of light where we understand the pupil whether it constra uh, constricts or it uh, relaxes and the second case where we are talking about the lens getting thin when you are trying to look onto a far off object and it gets thicker when you are trying to see the nearer objects the next important concept that we would understand is the retina now as we said retina is the point where you have image formation that takes place so you have rods and cones rods as we already understood provide clear vision during the night or low light intensity is when you have rods that are uh, predominant however cones are usually seen with different colors so rgb are the main colors which is red green and blue and when all of these three get equally stimulated you would have white that would be seen so that is cones cones are usually seen for uh, are usually predominant with the day vision so that is a important concept under retina that we understand the part of the retina where you have the clearest image is the fovea and interesting thing about fovea now only 2 degree cone is the region where you have the brightest vision or the clearest vision that could be seen so on this screen i repeat again what would happen only two letters of a word would be the most clearest section that would be visible to me but you might say that the whole of the screen appears clear why is it so it is because we are constantly scanning our eyes through the screen now when you are constantly scanning your eyes through the screen what would happen the fovea continuously changes and the clearest area continuously shifts and therefore you have a clear vision of the complete image that is seen the third important concept as we discussed is the blind spot now blind spot understand this carefully you have the point just at the tip of the optic nerve where it is and this is the point where there is a total uh, loss of information there is no image formation that takes place uh, and therefore it is known as blind spot now a simple demonstration to understand a blind spot is i have a card i mark 
circle on one end and I mark cross on one end. So on my right, I mark a cross. And what I do is, I with my left eye, I try to see the right cross. Okay, so I close my right eye, therefore, and with the left eye, I try to see the cross. Now, as I bring at this point, I'm able to see the cross as well as the dot that is there on the paper. But as I try to bring the sheet closer to me, what would happen? When the sheet comes closer to me, the dot would at one point get in, would not be visible. And the point where this dot disappears is the point which is blind spot. The same experiment you can do by closing your left eye and with your right eye try to see the dot and bring the card nearer to you. So on that card where you have the dot and the cross that is marked, you understand how the blind spot is actually visualized. Now to understand it very simply, it's a very very simple model based on the principle of similar triangles where we understand how image formation takes place at the blind spot. Now in a simple words, the size of the blind spot, the size of the blind spot that is present divided by 2 would be equal to the diameter of the blind spot divided by the distance with the object that is there. So that ratio would remain the same. And this is the basic principle where we are trying to understand how the adjustments or the vision actually occurs and try to find out the actual blind spot in the eye. So again, a very, very important concept. So what we have discussed in this section, the most important concepts are, the first is the intensity of light. Based on the intensity of light, we say in the bright light, you have the constriction of the pupil that occurs. In the dim light, the pupil expands. Then based on the distance, if I'm trying to look onto the far off object accommodation of eye takes place and the lens gets thin when the object is closer to me what would happen the lens gets thicker and that is due to the changes in the ligament uh, the suspensory ligaments and the ciliary muscles that are there the next important thing is the concept of blind spot how image gets lost at the blind spot, how you have the brightest image at fovea and then you have the retina where the actual image formation takes place. So we will understand vision defects. Now there are various forms of vision defects that are seen. Uh, the most common is myopia and hypermetropia that you have uh, commonly heard of. But before that, let's understand our vision range. So with one eye, so if I close one of my eyes and I try to see with one of the eyes, it's it's understood that you have a vision of nearly 150 degrees that is covered. However, when you focus with both the eyes, you have a vision of 180 degrees that is covered. Now, if I shut one of the eyes and I just observe through one eye, the image that is formed is two dimensional. With both of the eyes, you have a three dimensional view that could be seen for a image because our brain combines those few different images that are there, which are centimeters apart and uh, extra information is being derived to give it a depth view or a three dimensional view. Now, as we said, what are the common defects? So first defect that we talk about is myopia. Remember, myopia is also known as nearsightedness. That means the near vision is fine. There is problem with the distant vision. So don't get confused why myopia is called as nearsightedness. It's very, very clear. Myopia is called nearsightedness because the near vision is clear, but there is difficulty with the distant vision. Again, when it is myopia, what happens is in usual circumstances, let's say you have an object here and you have the eye here, the image should be formed on the retina. But in the case of myopia, image forms before the retina. So the correction is used to adjust that formation of image back onto the retina. And therefore, what is used? You have the lens that is used. What kind of lens is used? You have the concave lens that is used. Now, Concave lens is used for distant vision. However, when you have convex lens, it is used for uh, near vision. So distant vision, you have concave lens, repeat again. And for near vision correction, you have 
the convex lens that is used so near vision if you are have having problems with near vision it is known as hypermetropia and that means far sightedness as the name suggests far sightedness so the images in the far off areas are clearly visible but the near images are not clearly visible and again if i take the same example i have an object here the eye here technically the image should fall on the retina but when you have far sightedness or hypermetropia what happens is image falls back of the retina so the correction is required to bring the image back to the retina and for that you have a convex lens convex lens is thick at the center part and the concave lens is thinner at the center okay so we we have understood this in the section on the structure of the lenses in the light class the next important correction that we say is presbyopia now presbyopia usually occurs with increasing age where the negative power or the near sightedness starts to reduce myopia starts to reduce and hypermetropia starts to increase and therefore it's required to have a bifocal lens bifocal lens is a correction where the upper part of the lens helps you to see far off objects so the upper part of your spectacles would have con cave lens however the lower part of your spectacles would help you to see the near objects and that would have the convex lens so that is why we call it a bifocal lens you have both the concave and the convex lenses under one uh, pair of glass that you have and that's what is presbyopia so these are the three major terms that you must understand i repeat again myopia hypermetropia and presbyopia presbyopia where you have vision with both problems with both distant and near vision hypermetropia when you have clear distant vision or far sightedness but you have problems with near vision myopia where you have near sightedness that means clear near vision but problems with distant vision so that is a that are the various vision defects that are seen the next important concept that we understand is eye donation now of uh, the global population it's believed more than 35 million population in only in the developing parts of the country are suffering from visual impairedness and of which 4.5 million of the population suffers from corneal blindness which could be corrected if one eye is donated there could be four corneally blind people that could be treated now this could be because the different part of the eye could be used in different cases and therefore one eye uh, one pair of eyes that is donated can give life to uh, four corneally blind people the next important thing that we understand is how does this donation process takes place so immediately after death within 4 to 6 hours you would have the recovery of the eye that needs to be done and this needs to be preserved so this could happen either at uh, the home or at the hospital it takes merely 10 to 15 minutes and if the deceased is ready to donate the eye or it has uh, put that in his will uh, then definitely uh, the process can go ahead uh, people with acute illnesses in the form of aids or any kind of hepatitis that a person is suffering from le uh, leukemia or cholera or meningitis or any form of communicable disease cannot donate the eye others who are not suffering from any of the major illnesses or critical illnesses can definitely uh, go for eye donation uh, eye donation can uh, be done to any age group and any gender so irrespective of that eyes could be donated uh, so those are some of the important concepts that we have understood in this lecture we would be covering many more interesting sections stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead